one of the great MCs of the last 25, nearly 30 years is obviously Jadakiss. Now Jadakiss is somebody, obviously from Yonkers, New York, you know, in the mid-90s, the locks was trying to get a record deal, trying to get in the music industry, and they were known as the Warlocks. And then they found their way to Bad Boy Records. This at the time where Bad Boy Records is at the top, at their peak. You got Puffy, all jiggy, Biggie, Craig Mack, Total. But then um, in that 1996, that's when Puffy starts adding even more to their roster. They go and get the Locks, who drop the Warlocks name and become the Locks. As Puffy thought War Locks, War in their name was too brutal and not marketable. To me, War Locks sounds better than the Locks, but whatever the case. You know, um, Puffy, who is a vulture of Harlem from Mount Vernon, at that time, he did have the chance to potentially get Big L, Cameron, or Mace. And obviously, he picked Mace. And, um... In the short time that the locks were around, Biggie Smalls took a liking to them, so on and so forth. They now are at the top label. They have the top production, the Hitmen. And you're with Puffy. You know, he has all the connections you need, so on and so forth. Hit the like button. Share this video. Subscribe to this channel. Now... This video is obviously, as the title says, Jada Kiss Biggest Weakness. And his weakness is kind of a contradiction of what the locks always complained about and were against. But more on that later. So when they get to Bad Boy Records, you know, Biggie was uh, revered as a great MC and artist and all that. And the formula that Puffy developed was, we're going to sample disco records and pop records from the 70s and 80s, and they did it tremendously. Now, of course, you always have these dusty morons who got stains around the, the brim of their fitted hat called hip-hop heads. I, I got to do a rant on uh, why I despise quote-unquote hip-hop heads, but, um, you know, these are the monkeys. Oh, uh, when Nas did... When Nas did, if I ruled the world, he sold out. These are these monkeys. It's, it's, so I, I, I said this before. These fools, if you put a female on your song to sing the chorus, somehow that means you sold out. So I guess Melly Mel was a sellout when he did that song with Shaka Khan, I Feel For You. I guess he was a sellout there. I guess Run DMC was sellouts because they did Walk This Way. <laughs> these monkeys. <laughs> these monkey morons. With this whole hip hop head sellout trash. But these fools are the same ones who keep listening to what they're complaining about. You know, I, I like I like underground quote unquote real hip hop as much as the next person. You know, I can, you know, I all it's 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 easy to mention Tupac and Biggie and Nas and Rock him and LL and, and Jay Z. It's easy. But you know, I appreciate Esham. I appreciate Immortal Technique, J Live, Intelligent Hoodlum. You know, I appreciate, you know, um, Ed OG and the Bulldogs. I can appreciate, you know, Just Allah and, um, you know, King Magnetic and Vinnie Paz, Jedi Mind Tricks. I can appreciate that the same way all the other uh, artists I just mentioned. But that doesn't mean that's the only way for hip hop to exist. Is this just never-ending bars, and we don't like courses, and we don't like hooks. It just has to be bars and bars and bars. Man, hit yourself in the head with a bar. But anyway, these people would label Puffy as the ultimate sinner against this rule of selling out. Now, what was it very pop? Yes. Was it real jiggy and the shiny suits? Yes. But they did that very well. It still has soul and substance. Mace is one of the nicest rappers ever. That's without question. When it comes to nicest, Mace got to be top five nicest ever. That's just kind of like a Harlem thing. Just nice. Um, and the locks who got 
to Bad Boy Records, they put on the shiny suits and then complained about it later. So does that make the lock sellouts? <laughs> or was that just the style of the times? Now, when you get to a 98, a 99, 2000, the mace would, or the mace, good Lord, the locks would go on this campaign of free the locks and we got to get out of Bad Boy and, you know, and they got to Rough Riders Entertainment and Interscope Records and they went on a campaign of, you know, we never want to do the shiny suits and Puffy had us all this jiggy nonsense. and But they performed it well, you know. It, it wasn't. It wasn't uh, they're pushing some agenda they were so against. No, it might have just been, okay, you, you want to wear about, you know, iceberg pants and FUBU jerseys. <laughs> oh, don't you just miss 1999? Dreamcast. Uh, anyway, but um, they went on this like, we are anti-shiny suits and anti-mainstream and anti-puffy, but they signed to Interscope. So if you thought you were a slave to Puffy on Bad Boy, okay, you're now a slave to Jimmy Iovine. And Ted Fields. Whatever happened to Ted Fields? Did somebody hit him in the head? Well, where's Ted Fields at? Anyway. So, you know, the locks get their deal. They put out We Are The Streets. You know, a, hard a hardcore record. A classic album. Not five mics, but probably a strong four, four and a half mics. Classic. Um... And then, you know, Jada Kiss, he finally gets this solo album, you know, in, in you know, when the locks came out, you when they had the first album, Money, Power, Respect, you know, the the locks always had like their solo cuts on the album so each one of them could shine. But when Jada Kiss did uh, All For The Love, oh my God. In 98, people been waiting for the solo Jada Kiss album and he finally puts out his solo album in 2001. And then, you know, uh, you know, Kiss the Game Goodbye. And then 2004, you know, Kiss of Death. And then it took years and years and years. And then I think 2009 was his third album, I believe. And um, the problem with Jada Kiss is, and it's not so, this, this part's not so much of a problem. We'll get to the problem in a moment. One of the problems is he's so great, but he don't have like a classic five mic album. He does, Jada Kiss does not have one classic album and when i say classic for the the males crying already in the comments i'm not talking about what you like oh well well it, it was a classic to me we're not talking about you we're talking about an objective review of music history he does not have a five mic classic type of album he has a bunch of good four mic albums okay his, his his uh, first two albums were good albums. They were not great. They're not classic. You're not going to put no Jadakiss album up there with Illmatic or Reasonable Doubt or Me Against the World or Disposable Arts or Paid in Full or, or none of those. Not even close. And um, he's not the only artist who is that great of a talent, but they lack a real classic album. Fabulous is great, but he has no classics. You know, this happens. Um, you know, Buster Rhymes is great, but he don't have a five mic type of classic album. He has classic singles, classic video, classic material, legend, but not, they don't, these artists don't have albums that you put right up there. We're not talking about your personal taste. We're, t we're talking about an objective review of music. Cause it's always with this internet. Oh um, what would people do if there were no more comment sections? They would blow their brains out. If they could not express their whining and crying to defend a rapper, because always remember, you're you're not allowed you're not allowed to have a different perspective. Always remember, we have to all worship the same people. Eminem is another one. No five mic albums. That Marshall Mathers is a strong four and a half though. The Eminem show strong four and a half, but he has no classic five mic albums. Now. I think one of the reasons is for this, and this is the problem with Jadakiss, and this is the main problem with Jadakiss. He and the Locks were so against, you know, crossing over. They were so against this, but at the same time, they did the Honey remix with Mar Mariah Carey, which is classic. Oh, were, were the Locks, for, for these hip-hop heads with the streaks in their draws, were the Locks sellouts because they did the Honey remix? All right, I guess ODB was a sellout. Me and Mariah. 
go back like car seats and pacifiers or whatever that trash was. Oh God! I always, well, as a kid, as a kid, I always thought ODB was remedial. <laughs> it turns out he just had gonorrhea, but um, or gonorrhea. P there, there are actually people who name their child gonorrhea. Whatever. That's another video for another channel. But uh, yeah, so I guess there's sellouts too. Everyone's a sellout except for um, <laughs> Esham. I guess Esham is the only real hip hop artist. Yes, because how dare you? How dare you expand beyond the same New York basement beats? Anyway, a lot of these hip hop heads, when when they when when it comes to quote unquote real hip hop, it like. If, 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 if things were a color, it, everything is like in black and white and gray. They have no red. They have no blue. They have no green. It's just this basement. We only want drums and we don't just bars and bars and bars and bars. Oh, God. I went through this before. These typical hip hop heads, they're always the same. They wear fitted hats 24-7. They always have the same story. Oh, I, I was at a black college in North Carolina in, in 1992. I was at a black college in 1993 in Virginia, and I saw Wu-Tang's first shows, and they're always the same. They always they always end up, they always look like LeBron James with his nappy beard. It's always the same. These hip-hop heads, they always got that same profile. They love Wu-Tang. They don't like Tupac. <laughs> they like they like Black Thought, but they don't like when he does songs for females. Uh, what, what's another one? What's another one? Oh, they worship Jay Z. <laughs> they they call him Hove. I, I'm sorry, that's a blasphemous nickname. His, his name is the Jigga Man. Okay, I ain't calling him Hove. His name is the Jigga Man. All right, to me, it's still 1998, but um. All them hip hop head monkeys the same. I did a video on this channel where uh, one of these monkey channels was like, Red Man was the best rapper of the nineties. It's like, what are you talking about? In in what world is Red Man the number one rapper of the nineties? In in what world? So in the nineteen nineties, the whole decade, you telling me Red Man is number one over Biggie, Tupac, Jay Z, Nas, uh, Big Pun. <laughs> Busta Rhymes, LL, DMX, uh, Method Man. You you tell me, Rayquan, uh, not Rayquan, Red Man is the number one rapper of the 90s decade? Check out that video on the channel. I broke that down. One of my best commentaries. Hit the like button. Share this video. Subscribe to this channel. You can donate to the Cash App in the description of this video if you enjoy this content, enjoy this channel. A lot of these videos come from donations from viewers like you. This is PBS. Um, but the problem with Jadakiss is he had the ability to make a five mic classic, but what he did was at times he would sacrifice the art for sales. He would sacrifice the art for attention. Now, I didn't view the locks as sellouts when they were on Bad Boy. I didn't view them as sellouts because they did Honey or they did songs of Mariah Carey, Mary J. And I still don't view them as that. But there were times where Jadakiss would do an album and he'd have his typical, you know, great song, great verse, great beat. But then he'll have a song with an auto-tune rapper. He'll, he'll have a soulless person like uh, the fake... Officer Ross or Khaled or or he'll go and work with them. There were times either it was on his album or someone else's album, he'd work with these soulless people. There were many times where he would sacrifice the quote unquote art for money or attention. But it's like when Jadakiss puts out an album, nobody's you're not like this whole thing of well, we're gonna gain a younger audience if we put this auto-tune Atlanta rapper. How? That's the biggest myth in the world. Nobody, if you listen to Jadakiss, you don't want to hear future. <laughs> you don't, you don't want to hear some little monkey calling himself a demon or a savage. You don't want to hear these syrupy morons. You don't. But Jadakiss did not get this. You know, it, it was it was years and years, uh, top five, dead or alive, top five. He was hyping this for years, then he puts it out, and the album... Is what I just said. Some songs is great, but then some some songs you skip because it has somebody on it that does not fit, that should not be on this record. 
or it has some horrible auto-tune hook that's being signed. That is selling out. They weren't sellouts because they put on a shiny suit. That was the style of the time. And it, and, and, and it had soul and substance with it. That was just the outfit. It was that Jiggy Harlem, uh, New, New York nonsense. But then later on, when, he, when he's doing songs with these certain people, it's like, well, why is this on here? I don't want to hear auto tune on a Jadakiss song. I, I don't want to hear. I, I, I don't want to hear these these damn near mumble rappers. <laughs> so that was his main flaw. At times, he would sacrifice the art for money. Like there, there was an interview. You know, they the locks. Even now, if you do the interviews, and they'll be like, "So, uh, do you prefer the major label or independent?" And Jadakiss and them are still talking about. I like the major label push. Why? What can a label do for you? You're, you're a legend. You don't need a label. The point of a label is they give you the money for a budget. Okay, what type of budgets are labels cutting today? Nobody buys albums. So that's the major one flaw that I could find with Jadakiss is sometimes he would sacrifice his own craft for a, a hypothetical bit of attention from an audience that does not care about him in the first place. And with that said, I'm up out of here. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and that is it.